Good afternoon and welcome to another A Push video with Mr. Pate for Barlow High School. Today we're looking at the First New Deal. There were many effects of the Depression by 1932 that had come to just devastate the economy. And if we look at the, the recent Great Recession that America has gone through, clear, clearly this is far worse. And, it, and I'll show you why and how. So the economy is not go, growing, it's shrinking, um, and it's it's massively, it's, it's of a greater m economy of scale, I suppose you could say. 25% unemployment when you factor in the farmers who lose their farms, because 25% of farms are foreclosed, that's one third of all workers basically do not have uh, a job that would like to have one. At the zenith of the Great Recession, you're really talking about, you know, 9 or 10%, although we have this ridiculous way of calculating that now, so if people give up looking for a job, but don't have a job and wish they did, they're just not actively seeking, we don't count them anymore. So the real unemployment is several percent higher, and this is one of the reasons that it's going to be very, you know, it's very slow pulling out of, uh, the, you know, the Great Recession as, um, as people find jobs, other people get encouraged to come look for jobs again. So our real unemployment at its worst is probably like 13 to 15 percent in reality. 25 percent of banks failed. There were a huge number of thousands of uh, businesses that failed. This is everything from U.S. Steel closing its doors down to small businesses left and right going out of business. And there's also, this is not to be understated, a general feeling of hopelessness and loss of feeling of self-worth. And this comes really from the fact that America had, had, was a country of rugged individualists. And we saw this in stark detail in the Gilded Age in you know this whole land of opportunity and... Americans going and making things happen for themselves. Rags to Riches stories by Horatio Alger and the Rags to Riches life of many of the robber barons or captains of industry, whatever you want to call them. Well, Americans have always felt like it's my job to make it, and now they didn't. So this is a profound shift like psychologically for Americans. And a couple of things just to define. 1933 to like early, mid-1935, really, you're looking at the first New Deal. By the end of 1935 and up through 1938, as Roosevelt starts to look at re-election and he's getting criticized strongly by the left, by people saying, you're not doing enough. Now, keep in mind, FDR was doing far more than Hoover had done, but they say you're not doing enough. He is going to shift to his left politically, gearing up for election, and respond to some of these ideas of these even more liberal people, such as Huey Long. Uh, and that will influence this, the second new deal in, in greater amounts. So looking at this, so some of this, what does FDR do? I mean, FDR shows up. We have this terrible waiting period that we've seen over and over. It hurt Lincoln at Fort Sumter. Um, and, and just the general preparation as the South seceded, he didn't have as much time to prepare. Fort Sumter happens right after he, get elect, he got elected. He was able to make a good decision there, but there, was, there were just months and months between Election Day and inauguration. We didn't need that much transition time. And as a matter of fact, the 20th Amendment is going to shift this. Uh, it's going to cut down this time because FDR gets elected and then they have to wait four months plus for him to actually get into office. And that was ridiculous. So they're going to cut it back to uh, late January, which is a good, good switch. As soon as he gets into office, though, FDR starts giving fireside chats. He's going to reassure the American people and Hoover was a brilliant guy. He actually had some good policies like the Reconstruction Finance Corporation that you've heard about in the podcast. But he didn't do enough. And he just had this belief based on his experiences and his being a rugged individual, self-made man, that the economy would come out of it. Because the economy had always come out of the depressions. But this was not those depressions. It was worse. The fireside chats, Roosevelt, instead of seeming distant and... Um, you know, unfairly seeming unconcerned as, as Hoover was perceived by people. The fireside chats, Roosevelt encourages everyone to tune in. His first fireside chat is heard by millions and millions of people. And he basically is saying, we've got plans, we're going to do things. And he says, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a bank holiday. The bank holiday, essentially, they said that banks would be closed for about 10 days. Almost immediately they would go and be, become closed. And this closing of the banks would allow them, them being the government, to inspect every bank and see if it was on sh sound financial footing. If the bank was in good shape, the bank could reopen after the 10-day period. If the bank was in bad shape, the bank would never reopen again. And he said, my fellow Americans, 
uh, this will give you confidence because when those banks reopen, if that bank reopens, you have confidence that's a sound bank, you can invest your money there. Now, because we saw in the, in the last one, these bank failures were the number one real reason for the depression, and they just caused this economic free fall, which affected the economy in manifest ways. But the bank holiday solves the problem. They, they have the Glass-Steagall Act, and they basically they, they close the banks, they help the banks that are doing well, and they kind of give them an emergency injection of money, and uh, you know the Fed was a big failure. The Fed was supposed to stop something like this from ever happening. It didn't. Um, they will tweak some things with the Fed after the Great Depression to make it more effective at trying to stop future runs on the bank, at least, uh, economically with this. So he's reassuring Americans. He tells them, he, one of FDR's great strengths with the fireside chats, he always let his uh, citizens, the people who would tune in, listen, his audience, know that he understood where they were at, he was doing things that would help, and he would explain how it was going to help. And so that clear communication, FDR is the first person to really harness uh, in America the radio this effectively. Uh, ironically, Hitler will be the first to really use it as effectively in Europe for much more sinister purposes. But FDR, he's communicating directly to the American people. American people felt like he cared about them. They felt he had a plan, he was doing something. And this is going to give them hope, which was very important at the time. So the bank holiday is very successful. Now, does that solve everything? Of course not. But it's when they reopened the banks, deposits exceeded withdrawals, and the bank panic was over at that point. The 100 days. The 100 days is going to be a ton of different pieces of legislation that are introduced in this first new deal period of time. Um, they have 15 things they introduced in the first 100 days of office. And then there will be other things that fit into the, the first New Deal as well. This is the main part of that. But basically, they throw out tons of ideas. So what I kind of want to do, the podcast will get into more explanation of some of these things. And the, one of the podcasts or the other podcast uh, will talk about uh, the second New Deal. But looking at the first New Deal, relief. He calls it the three R's. Uh, and relief means it's basically temporary relief to help people survive. That's a bad definition to use the word relief twice, so I apologize for that. But basically, it's temporary assistance to allow people to survive. And so what you're going to do is you're going to see that the Civilian Conservation Corps is going to give people jobs going and working on putting trails into foresty areas. Um, Multnomah Falls is going to get some work uh, being put together by the CCC. Timberline Lodge in Oregon at Mount Hood is going to get some work from the CCC. They're taking kind of wilderness areas or natural areas and they, they build things to kind of enhance those or make them more usable. Uh, a lot of the people in the CCC were kind of teenage youth, young men who the government feared, frankly, that they might try and lead a revolution because how bad things were and they were just kind of roaming around riding you know the rails from town to town looking for work and couldn't find anything uh, the army kind of oversees the CCC and treats them kind of like they're getting a little bit of a boot camp and it's very regimented and it's all these young men and it's going to be a very successful program and kind of puts these young men on a path of responsibility and being able to make it and having some direction so that was very important because another one of the things with the, the Great Depression is the collapse of the family. I mean, some families sent their kids away and never came back. Families had divorces, suicides, all these problems. It was a depressing time. The uh, Public Works Administration, the Works Progress Administration, these are going to be building schools, um, additions to universities, bridges, uh, repairing roads, all kinds of infrastructure related um, work on airports, seaports. All kinds of infrastructure related activities. The government basically is directly hiring people to work, basically to have enough money to survive. FARA hired a few people, but it also, it's a federal emergency relief uh, agency. FARA is going to just give direct handouts to people. If you have seen uh, Cinderella Man, the movie, uh, I believe FARA, he, you know, he goes, I don't remember what the boxer's name is, but the guy goes in. And he's getting like literally like relief checks to just kind of help him pay his bills 
and stay afloat a little bit while he searches for work or tries to work day to day. It's not enough money to help him live comfortably. It's enough to try and get by, not lose your rent on your place you're staying, have power, that type of thing. Uh, get a little bit of food. So Farah is there. So these things are our temporary assistance for uh, people who need it. Another thing, re recovery. This is going to be trying to get people back on their feet. And once people get back on their feet and are working, this is going to raise demand and prices, hopefully, eventually. If you think about the downward spiral that I showed you on the last video, you know, you have to have people get jobs to raise demand, to raise prices, and get the positive cycle building, which will, of course, then stimulate more people getting hired, and it goes from there. So, a couple of examples of this, NIRA or NRA as it's commonly called, this is National Recovery uh, Administration and the uh, AAA. This is kind of coordinating and working with businesses to get people, stimulate them getting people back to work. The AAA is subsidies for farmers. Also the government takes a role and if there's a surplus of food production in some area, they buy the extra and they either give it away as relief basically to poor struggling people or they destroy it. This happens with some crops, it happens with pigs, um, sometimes they destroy the extra and they are actually going to get criticized for throwing away food when some people are starving which was pretty crazy but they're trying to stimulate demand and raise prices for farmers. Uh, other farm actions that are going to be taken are going to be designed to help farmers not lose their farms and avoid foreclosure so and, and help them form cooperatives to uh, survive financially so steps taken to help farmers and again the idea is this is kind of a not immediate it's more of a long-term getting things going back in a positive direction when the private economy could not hire people having another way to do that the reform is long-term trying to fix systemic problems in the economy some examples of this, FDIC, this is the guarantee of your money that I talked about on the last podcast, our last video, related to uh, your bank accounts, that the federal government would guarantee the money through FDIC if banks joined it. Of course, banks all had to, or they would lose all their customers to banks that did, so they all join. SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, they're going to ban margin trades, which were one of those over-speculation things leading to the stock crash. They're also going to make sure there isn't insider trading and that the um, that basically the stock market is kind of policed a little bit so that abuses don't occur. The TVA, you have an area of the country that's completely backwards, has no electricity or, well, it's really lacking anything of modernity or infrastructure. So the government is basically going to set up this, this corporation called the TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority, and they are going to, it still exists today, uh, one of the long-lasting things from the New Deal. And they're going to basically build dams that create electricity for the TVA and help modernize this area. Social Security. Of course, now, Social Security is kind of on that border between first and second New Deal. Uh, it's on the border because it's not one of the 100-day programs. Um, and frankly, Huey Long is going to, and, and Francis Townsend, uh, they're going to come out and say we should have uh, older uh, age pensions in America and we should take care of Americans better with major welfare efforts. Social Security is a response to that saying, okay, we will have a permanent pension. The Wagner Act is significant because it is going to be like the you know f biggest, most successful step forward for unions where the right to bargain and bargain collectively um, the right to organize, these are going to be much more protected after the Wagner Act than anything that happened before them. So kind of just to wrap up and summarize, you have all of these problems. The general hopelessness people have felt was handled by the fireside chats. The farm foreclosures are going to be handled by the, the 100 days. The number of businesses that fail is handled by the 100 days. The number of banks that failed is handled by the bank holiday, and the unemployment is largely also handled by the 100 days.